Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Authentic Info Podcast. I'm your host, Admir Sandelcho. In this episode, we're looking at uh, the way the government has been spending when it comes to statues of our freedom fighters, especially the Mandela statues. We have seen the uh, unveiling of another statue on the 18th of July. Uh, this is uh, Mandela's birthday, we all know. So, But uh, it's quite... Uh, Concerning, I know, to a citizen like me. Uh, on the very same date, we've seen Anelem Dodda taking to Twitter to upload and show us that uh, her father has uh, single-handedly built a school. The very same day, the state takes to television, the ANC-led government, to show South Africa that they have built they have erected another statue of Madiba using uh, uh, our uh, tax money. It is the tax money that they have used to erect another statue of Mandela. How many Mandela statues do we have in South Africa? It's a lot. And why do South Africa or South African leaders or various departments still use their money to build Madiba statues? What does these things mean? Uh, or how, what value do they add into the economy of South Africa? And where does these statues take us? I mean, there are bridges. I, I've heard that that statue costs 3 million rand. I mean, it can build a, many community libraries. It can build even schools. Because there are many other infrastructures that the South Africa still needs. That to, I mean, in order to cover South Africans, especially in rural villages and rural areas of various parts of these uh, villages, I mean, with these provinces like in Limpopo, in the Eastern Cape, uh, these are some of the provinces which are left behind when it comes to infrastructure. But we see the state using uh, money, taxpayers' money, to continue building statues of politicians who. Uh, number one, there are many uh, statues of Mandela, but they are still building more. And what value do they add in South Africa into the economy? Uh, I mean, when are we going to recover that three million rand if a statue is an investment? Uh, maybe someone needs to educate me when it comes to this. Another concern is that uh, how, how, how long are we still going to pay back to these uh, families of former... Uh, liberation struggle icons. We know that there are buildings that uh, uh, departments are renting and the money goes to the, these families. We know that there are roads uh, uh, that are named after these struggle icons who are dead and the, the people who are benefiting are in, in their third generation of such families and they are not even actively involved in in politics, actually, they are fighting for that money. We, we know that there are hospitals like uh, Baraguanath uh, Academic Hospital, uh, the Krisani Baraguanath Academic Hospital. We know that the family is benefiting uh, from that hospital merely for merely that the, the, the state has used Krisani's name. We know there's Steve Biko Hospital. We know that uh, the Bramfisha buildings and things like that. And uh, the state is paying these families, you know. There are streets, street names in the city. Uh, there are airport names or Artambo International Airport. These families are benefiting out of that. And it's a lot of money that has been spent, that is being spent annually on uh, these families. And what is worrying is that uh, their family members are no longer that active in politics. They are no longer adding that value. They are just benefiting. So if the state is still going to continue to honor these people through building or erecting statues like the Madiba statues, which are all over South Africa, uh, I think it's a reckless uh, expenditure. That needs to be questioned or challenged. We have seen uh, the former minister, uh, Natim Teto. He wanted to erect... Uh, a flag worth 22, if not 21 million rand. Imagine they say that flag was going to glow at night, what, what. But people uh, 
uh, did not uh, agree with that move and then they ended up stopping uh, that uh, construction. Imagine 22 million rand for a flag. And now there's 3 million rand for another Madiba statue. We have a lot of them in South Africa. And uh, I don't see how it benefits South Africa. Maybe those who studied tourism can come and educate some of us in order to understand what these uh, statues or the erection of these statues really mean in South Africa or in the history of South Africa. Because uh, in 2015, 16, the student wanted the statues of apartheid to fall. They called for statues of apartheid to fall. And this means that even one day, there are those who are going to call for the statues of Madiba to fall. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying that it, we cannot rule it out. Maybe there are those who will say the ANC is using Madiba's name wrong. They must uh, implement whatever policies they have. They must uh, make sure that their, their manifesto is fulfilled and stop lying to the people. And they must destroy the name of Madiba so that the ANC cannot, they can stop making reference 30 years later to, Madi, to the Madiba name in order to fish votes from people who love the Mandela, that will do it for Madiba 30 years later. So maybe this is not that type of investment that the state needs. I mean, if there is a statue of Madiba in Pretoria, in the Union buildings, and there's another one elsewhere, another one elsewhere, I mean, even if they can say it's a a whole day destination, point of attraction. How much are these statues making annually? We don't have that information. So what is it that informs the need to build another one, to erect another one? I mean, if the state on the 18th of uh, July 20, 2023 is unveiling a statue and someone using his own money is opening a school, what does that say to, to the public, to a normal South African? It means that people have took to themselves and make it their responsibility to do what government is failing. We see uh, some rich black people giving back to the community through building uh, houses for the need. But when it comes to tenders and when they are, they are supposed to be houses built for the people, ANC politicians themselves, councillors, are the ones who remove people from lists. You have to pay them in order to be on the top 10 or top 20, things like that. You buy the numbers, you jump others so that you can get a house. Whereas the money comes from taxpayers and someone just goes to a community, ad ad identify a, a family that needs a house, and he, he built he builds a house without any tender. The person just see that the state is failing. So what are they using our money for? Where is the taxpayers' money going to? And it's bad. It's bad because. Uh, it means that things like schools, community libraries, even clinics, were well, going to see people uh, on co or communities, especially in rural villages, starting to build uh, these things for themselves because the state is taking money. I mean, we, we still need a lot of infrastructure uh, that is very important than to see Madiva on a statue. We can see Madiva anywhere. You can download this picture and see him and have him in, his, in your phone. There's no need to have a statue to know that there's Madiba. So I don't know what they're trying to install in our brains. Maybe they, they don't want, they want us to, to think of Madiba and continue to vote the ANC. Maybe it's a strategy that they are introducing. But I don't think it's going to work. I mean, people are becoming more and more informed and they, they are starting to question. Even opposition leaders, uh, they are finding it very difficult to win votes these days. I mean, a lot of people, I think the state is, the stats is 14 million 
South Africans who choose not to go and vote. Some of them don't even register. They don't vote, which means none of these political parties appeal to them, convinces them to vote. And if a political party like uh, the ANC is still erecting statues of Madiba, it means if Mbeki dies, they are going to make more statues of Mbeki. If Zuma dies, they are going to make more statues of Zuma. Where do these things take us? Where do these uh, statues take us? What value do they add in South Africa? Are they part of holiday destination to attract uh, foreign people that when they are in South Africa, they will go and see these statues? So I don't think it makes sense. I think they must prioritize. If they, there is money that is left and they don't want to take it back to treasure, they must just build community libraries, build schools, uh, build... Uh, sports centers, things which doesn't need a lot of money to build. You know, there are learners who each and every beginning of the year, they have to swim across rivers. They have to swim across uh, dams in order to go to the nearest school. It's bad. But each and every year, the government is spending money on useless things like Madiba Stage. I just don't support that move unless someone comes to educate me and make me understand that uh, it is important that we have a Madiva statue. More and more of them, each and every town and city must have them. Maybe I will understand, but I don't think I will ever be convinced to support a statue or another statue of a politician, by the way. It's not helping us. There are many people in South Africa, many foreign nationals in South Africa. The health system of South Africa is trained. Why don't they, they invest in more hospitals? Why don't they extend the existing hospitals? Because you can go to the nearest clinic. There, there is no medication. Why don't they invest in medication? So, it's very bad. It's a, it's a bad decision that they are, they are making. And to see, to, to show that there is money in South Africa and the, the government has money, they, they, it's just that the leaders who are in charge don't know where to spend this money. You'll see all these things. It exposes our state to say there is money. They, can, they just choose to build a man outside a particular building. And they say that it costs three million, cost five million, cost ten million. A flag that was supposed to cost twenty-two million. Twenty-two million rand can build a, a school, a proper school, with state of the uh, of the art uh, equipment, computers, internet, the best library. Twenty-two million. But someone chose to build to erect a flag. Three million rand can, can make a difference in so many communities. But someone chose to must build a Madiba statue. I don't support another Madiba statue. If Anelem Doda's father built a school on his own and unveiled it the very same day that the state erected the statue of Madiba using uh, taxpayers' money, it's embarrassing. And it's something that as South Africans we must question. And we must use this type of uh, reasoning when we go and vote in 2024. That we want to put uh, to power uh, the ANC that erects statues instead of building schools. It is heading us into a direction where people are going to uh, stand up in their own communities to build the uh, schools for their children, to build clinics for themselves, for their parents. It's quite painful to see elders in rural areas having to wake up in the morning as early as 4 a.m. to catch the first bus to the nearest uh, town so that they can go into a clinic and get their medication every Tuesday sometimes. Even if it's once a month, it's very difficult. Imagine in winter. A person who's a, a grandmother who's a, a grain who is 85 years old. 
She has to wake up, bath, uh, walk using a walking stick and catch a, a taxi or a bus as early as 4 a.m. It's cold. And they go and stand there in a very long queue. And when it's 11, 12, 1, where they're supposed to say a nurse, there's no medication. But someone is erecting a statue of Madiba using money that can assist in buying more medication for our old people. Using money that can assist in building uh, community clinics in all the villages of South Africa that can operate for 24 hours. But they don't want that because these guys don't feel these things because they stay in cities. They stay in suburbs. They have uh, inventors. They don't know the problem of load shading. Uh, the doctors go to where they stay. They don't go to a doctor. They have discovered a medical aid, one of the best. So they don't feel what we feel. They don't feel what our elders feel. They don't feel what uh, children feel. Because their children are, are abroad. And you can't blame them. They have money. But they are in positions where they must make things easy. Even for the, the poorest of them all in, the, in a rural village. There's no water in villages. There, there's no electricity. Electricity connections are not proper in villages. Water connections don't work in villages. But they take money and erect statues in the city. It's bad. I don't know what you guys think about this, but thank you for watching this episode. And uh, continue to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get more of these. Thank you.